Hello friends and welcome to Limitless Life. I am Larry Hutton and I am so honored to be able to bring you words that lift your life up to a new level. I'll tell you what, if you learn what God has to say about your life and about what Jesus did for you when he died for you and rose again for you and now he's actually living and he wants to live through you and in you, once you learn those things, it is a game changer. It's a life changer, man. I'm telling you what, you can be healthy, be healed of physical problems in your body. You can become financially free because God has a way for that for his children. You can become mentally and emotionally free, which is what we've been talking about. We're gonna pick back that series back up today. You can be merit maritally free. You can have a heavenly marriage. If you will learn to put Jesus first, I'm not talking religion here, I'm talking relationship. All the religions of the world, they serve dead gods. We serve a risen savior, Jesus. He's alive and well, so this is not a, a, a religion. This is a relationship. And so if you learn to let Jesus live through you, I'm telling you what, it just will make your life wonderful. So many people, their life is miserable. Why don't you get the ubble uh, with uh, wonderful on the front of it? <laughs> yeah. Supernatural on the front. Amen. So God doesn't want you miserable. He doesn't want you living a bum life. He doesn't want people living in depression. There's so many Christians. When I travel all the time, like I do, I see so many Christians living stress-filled lives. And stress and Jesus don't go together. You have to get your eyes off of Jesus to be stressed. Just like depression. Depression and Jesus don't go together. You have to get your eyes off of Jesus and onto self for depression to work. Depression cannot work on somebody that has their focus and attention on Jesus. I'm talking about on what Jesus did at the cross. I mean, people can say, oh, I love Jesus and all that, and they may not have a clue that when Jesus went to the cross, he bore their sin and put his righteousness in them. He bore their depression and put his peace on the inside of them. They may not even have a clue, and yet they still love Jesus. I loved Jesus before I knew anything about him. But I found out when I found when I got knowledge, glory to God, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Remember Hosea 4, 6? God said, my people, you and me, are destroyed when we lack knowledge. Or Isaiah 5, 13, my people go into captivity when they have no knowledge. So there's a lot of Christians that are captive to the world's ways and the world's thought realm, world's thoughts, world's thinking, and captive to sickness and disease and poverty and lack and all the world stuff that comes at every human, they're captive to that because they haven't learned what Jesus did at the cross for them. And so that's what we're always teaching on this program. That's why we call it Limitless Life. Praise God, I'm, take, I'm taking the limits off. But we're going to get right back into what we've been teaching. Uh, I titled this series, The Way to Control Your Feelings. The Way. You, that God has actually made a way, we found in the scriptures called the way of peace, but God has actually made a way for you to control how you feel. So every morning when you get out of bed or during the day when somebody treats you wrong or when something happens to you or nighttime when you go to bed or when you sleep, no matter when, you can actually choose to feel good, to feel peaceful. I'm talking in your mental and emotions now. We're dealing with, the, with your feelings, with your um, mental uh, state, so that you're not unstable, but that you're a stable Christian mentally. Uh, you're not a yo-yo Christian up and down. You're not a roller coaster Christian all over the place. No, you're a stable Christian. You operate in the peace of God. You operate in the joy of God. That's what we're talking about, uh, the way to control your feelings. So we found out already. Now, this is the end of our third week, so if you're just joining us, this is our 15th program, and uh, that means we've done 14 before this, so we're wrapping up uh, the third week this. We're going to continue next. We'll probably go on a couple more weeks here because there's so much in the Bible about this, about what God has done for our feelings and about how we can control our feelings, and we don't have to allow certain feelings to come into our lives. They're gonna try and, they're, they are going to try and come, but we don't have to allow them. And so we're going to talk about that again. We're going to go back to our foundation text of Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5. Surely Jesus bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. That word grief indicates an emotion, a feeling. Grief is a feeling. And sorrow, sorrow is a, a feeling. It's an emotion. And so Jesus bore them. We found out the word bore is a substitutionary term. He did it. That means he did it so we don't have to. 
So just like he bore my sins, I don't have to. He bore my depression, so I don't have to. He bore my worry, so I don't have to. And stress, and we found, in fact, we found out this word, these word griefs and sorrows, also means worry, stress, panic attacks, depression, anger, bad temper, discouragement, hopelessness, guilt, shame, frustration. All of the, the whole gamut of ne negative emotions are included in these two words, grief and sorrow. It includes sickness, disease, and physical pains as well, but I'm, I, we've already discussed all of the other, that all of these negative emotions are included in these two Hebrew words, grief and sorrow. So Jesus bore these negative emotions for me so I don't have to. And then the next verse, it says, He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastisement of our peace. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. We found out that means that He faced the reason or cause for us to feel uh, depressed or feel stressed or something. He, he faced the reason or cause and defeated that so that we could live above it and not let the reason, because there's a lot of reasons people feel depressed or a lot of reasons people get mad or a lot of reasons uh, people have hurt feelings. There's a lot of causes and reasons, but Jesus faced every reason or cause and have already defeated them. So that when you and I are in the situation and we, f and we have the reason, the, the, the real, the reality, the, the factual reason to feel that, the negative emotion, Jesus already faced that reason, already defeated it. So that means I'm already an overcomer if I know it. And that's why we're talking about this, because you've got to know it. Now, it says the chastisement of our peace. I haven't shared this with you. If you look up this word peace, you may know it, but the word peace is the word shalom. Let me just read from the Hebrew what the word shalom means. It means safe. It means happy. It means your welfare. It means health prosperity. It means peace. It means favor. It means rest. It means to be well. And it means wholeness, spirit, soul, and body, wholeness. So when you look at these terms, you can see some of them refer to physical things like health and to be well, welfare, that, that would also include physical, and then prosperity, and welfare, that would include your finances. These other words, safe and happy and peace and rest and wholeness, that would include my emotions. So the chastisement of my emotions, all of, all of my peace and joy, the chastisement, anything that could rebuke that or take it away, Jesus defeated it for me. It was laid upon Jesus. So I do not have to allow any negative emotion to stay in my life and neither do you. So we ended in Galatians chapter 5. Let's go back over to Galatians 5 where it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Reading from the New King James, against such there is no law. Now, if you were with me last program, you were probably shouting. I probably had you jumping for joy or dancing, or at least on the inside you were jumping and you felt like jumping up and dancing, shouting, because um, of what the Lord taught me and I taught last lesson. Whenever the Lord taught me about these nine fruit, and he, he zeroed in on the fruit of joy and peace, which affect the way we feel, our emotions. Joy and peace are feelings. They're, they're feeling fruit, but they're God's feeling. They're God's fruit. And uh, so for God to give us this fruit, that means we have it. But when I told you what the Lord said, he said, my fruit of peace and my fruit of joy are not seasonal. Boy, if you weren't here last program, man, go back and listen to it because I led up to it. I gave you a whole lot of testimony there. But when he said, my fruit of peace and my fruit of joy, they're not seasonal fruit like an orange or like certain fruit that you may have picked. See, I grew up in Florida picking fruit, so I knew that there were certain fruits that I couldn't enjoy from Florida except at certain seasons. But when God told me that his fruit of peace and his fruit of joy were in me, not seasonally, but every season of the year, in other words, all year round, then I realize, well, I don't have to have another down day the rest of my life then. Anytime I face a reason or cause to be depressed, I will pull peace up out of here. I'll pull joy up out of my spirit, out of my inward man, and I will use it. I will use this fruit because this is real. This is, in fact, this is more real than the natural realm. 
because this is the God realm. God's realm, spirit realm, we call it, sometimes we call it spirit, and that throws people off uh, because God is a spirit. But an, another term that you can use to help people understand it is eternal. So in other words, once we leave this body, you're not going to not be seen. You're not a spirit that you can't be seen. You're a, an, an eternal being. You'll be seen all right. You'll recognize other people. You'll still have all your, you'll be able to talk and hear and taste and all that stuff. But it's eternal. You enter, enter, you enter into the eternal realm. So God's word is eternal. And all of these nine fruit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, or, or kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, these are all eternal. So when God moves on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit brings these nine fruit with him. And you have them at your disposal. You don't have to use them, but you have them 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. You have them. So you don't have to have another down day the rest of your life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, let, let me just, let me deal with something here. Because whenever you talk to people, and I've talked to people all the time when I'm at churches and meetings and all, and of course now I'm talking to you, but I can't actually physically see you because I'm talking to you through the camera and you're watching. And, but, I'm, but I see, when I look at the camera, it's like I'm seeing people. That's how real it is to me. That's why I love doing television because it's not, it's not just sitting in a television studio and, and recording a program. It's, I'm seeing people watching me right now. I'm seeing people that are hurting. I'm seeing people that need to hear truth that's going to lift them up to a new level in life. And so when I share about you don't have to allow depression to, to control you anymore, you don't have to allow anger, you don't have to allow hurt feelings or, or whatever, there are always people present in my meetings, and I'm sure there are some watching, that, that say things like, you, Larry, you just don't know what I've gone through. And the implication, they may not say, well, I can't live in peace and joy 24, 7, 3, 6, 5, But the implication is because of what somebody did to me or because of what situation I am in the middle of right now, you just don't understand. It's just not that easy, Brother Larry, to live in peace and joy. And I, and I understand where they're coming from. I have been in hellish situations my own life. And I've been in, uh, ministering to a lot of people that have been in hellish situations, and all of them are real. They're legitimate. They're factual. But truth is more powerful. In fact, I look, when I see God's peace is in me, not seasonally, it's in me all the time, I kind of look at peace as like a big, huge grapefruit. You know what I mean? Because I used to work in the orange groves of Florida as a kid. And so the biggest fruit we picked was orange, was grapefruit. So when I saw that God's fruit of peace was not seasonal, I started looking at it this way. I started visualizing. I have grapefruit size peace on the inside of me. Shalom. Woo complete soundness of mind, rest, tranquility of mind, mental stability of mind. Woo glory to God. I got peace peace that passes understanding in my thinking. And so I think that way. And so uh, when I know that people are facing things and I know they're thinking, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, and, and they're, they're legitimate reasons what they're facing, I like to share just um, how powerful the peace that, that God put on the inside of you, how powerful this great fruit is in you, <laughs> this grapefruit sized piece. I want, I want to give a couple, of, a couple of illustrations to illustrate that even though you, you may be right now or you are facing a situation that it just feels impossible to operate in joy and peace, for your feelings to be controlled and, and just feel peace and joy. Let, let me share two illustrations. One uh, that Jesus experienced and then one that a, a person uh, in this earth that actually experienced that I know. Um, you remember the time over in uh, Mark chapter 4. If you read verses 35 through 41 of Mark 4, you read the story where the disciples are going across, uh, across the ocean. Jesus and the disciples got in a boat. They were going the other side. And Jesus decided, he, he knew that when they got to the other side, they were going to be really busy 
He'd been really busy before they got in this ship. If you read the whole story, they'd been really busy. And so he got into the other ship or got into this ship and was crossing and decided to take a nap. And then a storm arose. He evidently laid down before the nap because, you know, just reading the story, you kind of read that into it. it doesn't say that, but it looks like he probably laid down before the storm arose and started sleeping. Bible said he laid his head on a pillow. He was on the back part of the ship. And so the storm comes along. And then the Bible said uh, they were fearing for their lives. Now, that's a huge storm, right? So there's a cause to lose your peace, or at least not feel peace. There's a reason, a legitimate reason that you could get in fear, panic attack, or whatever, whatever negative emotion you yielded to, but that, that is a reason or a cause. But now remember, when Jesus went to the cross, he hadn't been to the cross yet for them, but he went to the cross, he not only defeated the fear, the panic attacks, the depression, the feeling, the negative emotion, he, he also faced the reason or cause and defeated them as well. So now you and I don't have to say, uh, Storm, you're a reason or cause for me to be afraid. No, Jesus already defeated you. He not only already defeated my panic attacks, he not only defeated my depression and, and stress and all that stuff, but he, he already faced you, the reason or cause for me to feel that way, and I'm not gonna face, I'm not gonna feel that way. I'm not gonna allow my feelings. I'll just stay and rest. Well, that's what Jesus did. And you can see that when you read the whole story because even after the storm is going, it's raging. The ship is being filled with water and they go and they find Jesus and he was still asleep. <laughs> he, was, he was showing you and me how a son of God, remember he was the first begotten, but after he rose from the dead, then the Bible starts saying he was, or uh, the Bible, um, before he was, before, let me get this straight, before he went to the cross, the Bible said he was the only begotten son of God. But after he rose from the get, dead, it says he was the firstborn of many brethren, firstborn begotten of God. So you and I that are born again, now we're sons of God. So we had the son of God, the, the only begotten before the cross, and then after the cross, the first begotten, showing how a son of God should be living through the storms of life and how they can control their feelings and emotions no matter what it looks like. So Jesus lays there sleeping during the storm. Now, I don't know if, if any of the water was getting on his face. Maybe he had a, something covering him. Kind of probably did. I don't know. But anyway, he's, he's got his head on a pillow and he's asleep. They had to wake him up when a storm, and they even said, we're about to die. They, remember what they said to Jesus, don't you care? We're about to perish. So there, I mean, the storm has gotten so bad and the ship probably getting to the point where it's getting close to sinking and yet Jesus is still sleeping. So they wake him up and they, of course, say what they said, which really is almost hilarious when you read the story. Jesus, don't you care? Jesus! They're probably screaming because of the volume of the storm and the wind and the waves and everything else. I'm sure it's very noisy, very loud, so they probably had to, they're probably screaming, Jesus! Don't you care? I thought that was kind of funny. Don't you care? What do you mean, don't you care? He has been with you and teaching you and training you and showing you how to heal the sick and cleanse the leper and raise the dead and cast out devils. What do you mean, don't you care? He's getting ready to go to the cross and die for you. What do you mean, don't you care? <laughs> But they said, don't you care? They woke him up. And it's so funny when you read the story there in Mark 4, 35 through 41, you see he didn't even respond to that. Not right away anyway. He didn't even respond to him. Didn't even answer him. Don't you care? And he got up, ignored them, and started looking at the storm. Now he looked at the problem. Now he looked at the test and trials of life, just like a son of God is supposed to, and you and I are sons of the Most High God. Here's how we're supposed to face them. Talk to them. Remember Mark eleven twenty three, 23? Mark eleven twenty two. 22, Jesus said, Have faith in God. And then verse 23, Whoever shall say to the mountain, be removed. So you speak to the problems of life, not about them. The more you speak about them, the bigger they will get in your life and the more problem they will be. The more you speak to them about what God has said and what Jesus has already done, they've got to bow their knee. So, Jesus got up, and you know what he did? This, this great fruit-sized peace, he released it. He said, peace, be still. What happened? What happened? Peace, 
And this is why I'm talking to you because you may be facing something right now where you just feel like it's impossible to live in peace. But I'm showing you right now, peace was more powerful when Jesus spoke peace to the storm. The peace was more powerful than atmospheric conditions. Whoa, that is powerful where it actually changed the atmosphere. I told you, I gave a couple programs ago, I told you how Liz and I spoke to a tornado that was heading toward our house. I'm not gonna go back into that, but we changed the atmosphere. We would not allow that tornado to hit our house. It actually went right over and on the top, tried to come down on the top of our house. You've probably heard the testimony. If not, go back and listen to it. But anyway, we wouldn't allow it and we would not get in fear. We spoke to it. We didn't say, oh, God, help us, God, help us, God. No, no, no. We already know God had helped us. He had already given us power and dominion and authority over all the earth. According to Genesis 1, 26 and 28, go back and read it. He's given you dominion over all the earth. Well, that includes storms. Anyway, Jesus got up and said, peace be still. And the storm stopped. You don't think... God's peace is more powerful than your atmosphere. It just changed the whole atmosphere of a storm, changed the atmosphere for us of, of, of a tornado, but it's changed my atmosphere when I've been in atmosphere of stress and strife and depression and discouragement. It's changed that atmosphere totally because I realize God's peace in me is more powerful than depression. God's peace in me is more powerful than any test or trial or hardship I'm going through, but I've got to release it. I've got to speak to the situation and then release that peace. No, I'm not, I'm not getting, I'm not getting out of peace. I'll speak to the storm and say, no, no, that I'll, whatever the reason is, you know, that person's actions toward me, whatever. No, you know, I'm not going to let the way they act rob me of peace. I have the peace of God and I will not let go of it. I have it 24, 7, 365. So I'm just going to rest. I'm just going to stay happy, full of joy, full of peace. Yeah, thank you, Lord. We had a lady, and it'll probably take me the rest of the program, then we'll pick back up next program. But we had a lady uh, come to our meeting that, that was bipolar. If you're not familiar with that bipolar, somebody that has major mood swings, they say it's a chemical deficiency, medical science does. And so then they put them on, um, on type of uh, medicine that will regulate the hormones and regulate the chemicals and all that and try and get their feelings and emotions balanced out. And it works part of the time, but like this lady, she'd been bipolar for over 40 years. She was 45, about around 45. She'd been bipolar over 40 years. When she was a little kid, they started, they diagnosed her as bipolar because her parents were bipolar, her brother was bipolar. So she started getting medication around the age of five, five or six years old. So she'd been on medication. When she came to Liz and I, she'd been on medication for over 40 some years. She actually didn't come to me unless she was in our meeting and she got a hold of my uh, teaching. We have the book, Internal Affairs, and the CD series. Um, uh, Free From Me is what it's called. We're, we're titling this The Way to Control Your Feelings, but if you get it on our website, it's called Free From Me. But she got a hold of that teaching and totally set her free. She was not bipolar when she was now standing in front of Liz and I. Two years later, we went back to the church to do another meeting there. And we hadn't taught on this subject. We were teaching some other things. One, one was a financial freedom seminar. Another was, I think, a healing crusade, whatever. But anyway, we had not taught, but she got a hold of the teaching and listened to the teaching and read the book and totally got delivered from bipolar. She stood in front of us and said, I'm not bipolar. In fact, she was the praise and worship leader of the church now. She said, I'm not bipolar anymore. She said, my parents were, my brother was, my brother still is. She said, but I learned that when Jesus went to the cross, he bore my depression, he bore my stress, he bore my panic attacks, my fear, he bore my, he bore every feeling, uh, inadequate feeling and negative emotion. He bore them all and I don't have to. And then he faced the reason or the cause. So the doctors may have told me the reason or cause was hormonal or chemical, but if Jesus bore the reason or cause, then there's no reason or cause that is more powerful than what Jesus did. And so I accepted that and I don't take medicine. I've been off medication for two years now. I'm not bipolar anymore. And so I asked her, I said, have the emotions or feelings ever tried to come back? She said, oh yeah. She said, you know, when you've suffered for 40 some years with those emotions and those feelings, you know what they feel like. She said, but I refuse to yield to them. I live in peace and joy now, 
24 hours a day for the last two years. Wow. That shows you that no matter what it is, whether it's a literal storm or whether it's a storm of hormones or chemicals or it's a storm of people's actions toward your, your feelings and trying to stir you up and get you all agitated, mad and upset, no matter what the storm of life or hardship of life we're facing, God's peace and God's joy in us is more powerful. Man, get a hold of the book, get a hold of the CD, and re remember we also have it in Bible study form where you can teach it in Bible studies or church youth groups or church groups or wherever you can. You have a leader's guide and a workbook for those that come to the class, and, you, and this comes in DVD or CD, however you want to teach it. So it's all available for you to help other people learn it as well. Thank you for joining us and thank you for supporting the program financially. You guys are so awesome. When you send in your financial gifts, we're helping reach more people. If you're watching right now, the people that are partnering are helping you see the truth that's making you free. So pray about partnering and then we'll reach more people besides you as well. We love you. Call you blessed. We'll see you next program. Until then, have a Jesus-filled day. Bye-bye. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, Go to LarryHutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Do you ever feel like you're riding a non-stop emotional roller coaster through life? Do you want to stop the seemingly endless ups and downs and rounds and rounds? Then it's time to learn what God has to say about getting your feet and your emotions back on solid ground. It's all too easy to let life's events, experiences, and circumstances dictate how we feel, speak, and act. But God gave us a much better way to live. Larry Hutton's life-changing book, Internal Affairs, and CD series, Free From Me, will give you the Bible answers and show you how to keep every negative emotion under complete control, all the time, in every situation. You will learn how to overcome all your negative emotions and live in peace all the time. To order Eternal Affairs and Free From Me, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-9673. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.